Imagine a towering fortress casting its ancient shadow over the Tiber River, an architectural behemoth that has stood the test of time and politics. Castel Sant'Angelo is not just a spectacle of Rome's grandeur, it's a labyrinth of secrets, a vault of stories where beauty and terror have danced together for centuries. What if I told you this place, initially designed as a serene final resting place, has also been a theater of cruelty, a chamber of dark decisions? Its stone walls have borne witness to the unfolding dramas of the Roman Empire, the rise and fall of the Roman Republic, and the labyrinthine politics of the Papal State. Among the key figures who've left their mark here are various popes, whose actions have swung between the poles of spirituality and ruthlessness. But what if these walls could talk? It is ironic that a place so closely connected to the spiritual well-being of Christendom has also been the site of a Roman tomb, a 6th century miracle, grisly executions, torture, and a place believed to have been inhabited by ghosts that are still seen today. Join us as we uncover the untold stories hidden within the vaults of Castel Sant'Angelo and the complex legacy of the popes who made it their fortress. Welcome to History on Fleet, Fortress and Flaming Sword. For you Americans watching, try to wrap your head around this. One of the most photographed and visited buildings in Rome is 1,884 years old in 2023. That's seven and a half times older than your country. And we sometimes look at a baseball stadium built in the 1960s as old. The Romans built what is now Castel Sant'Angelo as a tomb for one of the greatest emperors, Adrian, in 139 AD. It held the ashes of Adrian and seven other emperors, including Commodus of the movie Gladiator fame and ending with Caracalla in 217. It, along with the rest of Rome, were in decline in 401 when it was made into a fortress to help protect Romans from the encroaching tribes of barbarians descending south on the city. 198 years later, in 590, Rome was a Christian city, and it was suffering from an outbreak of plague. The people of the city were on the edge of extinction. Many people were holed up in the fortress where the castel stands. There are two legends about how the plague was ended, and both involved the Archangel Michael, the namesake of the castel. The first version is pretty straightforward. Hearing the prayer of the people of Rome, God sent the Archangel Michael to end the plague. He appeared to the crowd, standing on the top of the fortress, and sheathed his flaming sword, ending the plague, and resulting in the renaming of the fortress to the Castel Sant'Angelo, Castle of the Holy Angel. The second version has a more angry Michael appearing to Pope Gregory twice, once to tell him that the people at the fort are praying to an old pagan idol, and that he needed to go there and order them to stop. Arriving a bit later, the Pope tells the crowd to end their pleas to the idol, where the plague will never stop. When he does, Michael appears to the stunned crowd, stands in front of the idol, splits it in half with his flaming sword, sheaths it, and disappears. Plague over. In the Castel Sant'Angelo Museum today, you can see what were and are claimed to be the footprints of St. Michael, along with many other early Christian relics. Another Sack of Rome Watching documentaries or movies about Rome sometimes, you might think there was one huge sack of Rome when the Germanic Visigoths, who had been pushed out of their Dacian homeland in modern-day Romania by the Huns in 376, and entered the Roman Empire. They made a bad deal with the Romans, got very mad about it, and began a war with the Romans that ended with the sack of Rome in 410 AD, when they tore much of the city apart before establishing another home in France and Spain. But Rome had been sacked eight times once by the Gauls of modern-day France in 390 BCE, and the Visigoths in 410, another Germanic tribe, the Vandals, stole many of Rome's ancient treasures in 455. The Ostrogoths did it again in 546, and the Normans descended on the city after a nasty war with the Pope in 1084. In 1527, Rome was sacked by Holy Roman Emperor Charles V, King of Spain. The Pope and his allies believed that Charles, who was supposed to be the military protector of all Catholic lands, was getting too powerful, especially in Italy. The War of Words turned into a real war, and Charles marched a huge army to Rome, defeated the forces allied to Pope Clement VII, and lay waste to the city. Many of Rome's ancient and Renaissance treasures were stolen, and much of the city, especially churches and monasteries, were burned. One of the last holdouts in the city were troops and civilians in the Castel Sant'Angelo. When Charles's troops broke into the castel, they went on a killing spree, stabbing and hacking hundreds of people to death. Some were tossed off the heights of the castel. Others were tortured to death. Not the Pope, though. He was somewhere else, and eventually came to terms with Charles, 
So if and when you walk inside the grounds of the castel, remember, you're walking on stones that have seen a lot of blood. Beatrice Cenci There are many ghost stories about the castel. For centuries, tourists and others have reported seeing ghostly figures who appear to be medieval knights patrolling the ramparts of the former fortress. There have even been reports of strange lights coming from within and the movement of shadowy figures inside. One of the ghosts that might be haunting the Castel Sant'Angelo is Beatrice Cenci. She was convicted of organizing and participating in the murder of her abusive father on September 9, 1598, along with her stepmother, Lucrezia, her brother, Giacomo, and her stepbrother, Bernardo, who was 12. The trial of Beatrice and the others was the 16th century version of a celebrity trial. Her father was a count and owned much land as a castle. Beatrice was beautiful. All those arrested were accused of drugging Count Francesco Cenci, taking his body to the bridge of the Castel Sant'Angelo, hammering him to death, and throwing his body into the Tiber River. The count was known to have been violent towards his first and second wives, beat his sons, and was accused of sexually assaulting his daughter, who had reported it to the city authorities, who took no action. In addition to Beatrice and her family, two Cenci family vassals, one of whom had become Beatrice's lover, were arrested for drugging the count. Confessions made under torture were common in those days, and Beatrice's sweetheart was tortured before he confessed his role and that of the others. The second vassal was believed murdered by a family friend before he could get caught. There was really no question about guilt. Even though many people in the city sympathized with Beatrice and her family, who were even granted an extension to find some way to alleviate their sentence or clear their names. But murder is murder. And back then, especially of a father and a nobleman, the bridge of the Castel Sant'Angelo was used in medieval days to display the heads of those who had been executed inside the fortress, which also served as a prison. In Beatrice's time, the plaza on the Castel side of the bridge was used as an execution site. Beatrice was third in line. The eldest brother was led up to a platform and then killed with a hammer blow to the head, as his father had been. Beatrice's elder sister was then beheaded with an axe, and then Beatrice herself. Her youngest brother, who was 12, was forced to watch and then had his sentence reduced to life as a galley slave. Out of mercy, he was released a year later. Beatrice's story inspired writers and artists at the time and since. Her portrait hangs in the National Gallery of Art in Rome, and writers such as Duma, Stendhal, and others wrote about her or characters inspired by her in their works. Two movies were made of her life, one in 1941 and the other in 1969. Since her death, people have reported seeing her ghost walking the area where she was killed a decapitated woman's body dressed in black, slowly walking with her severed head in her hands. The many ghosts and eerie sounds reported in the 20th and the 21st centuries? It might be the spirits of the men and women tortured and killed in the Castel Sant'Angelo by the Gestapo during World War II. It was their headquarters. This has been History on Fleek. See you next time.